NASA is really great about having uh, many, many programs that students can participate in, and one of its programs is called the Reduced Gravity Education Flight Program. Of course, we all love the acronyms that NASA has, um, RGEFP. And within the umbrella of uh, reduced gravity programs that NASA has is something called SEED, Systems Engineering Educational Discovery. And that is the program that we, the team from MIT, participated in. The whole goal behind this particular project is that there's an emphasis on systems engineering. NASA has these projects that they want students to work on, and what we have to do as a team is to propose that we are a good, cohesive team with different skill sets and that we can perform systems engineering. Um, so each of us can contribute in different ways to make a particular project successful. And that's exactly what we did. We put in a proposal defining what systems engineering is, giving a little resume for each of us on the team, and saying these are the projects that we would love to work on. And we got chosen as one of six teams that would participate in SEED out of approximately 30 applications. So Mira and I were roommates at uh, JPL, NASA Jet Propulsion Lab, over the summer last year and her friend had participated in this program and she'd asked me if I would like to start a team with her and right away my response was sure, it, an opportunity to fly in microgravity, who wouldn't take that? So we slowly started deciding how we would want to form this team, when we would start and we collaborated with two mentors from NASA Johnson Center to design and test a model artificial gravity vehicle. So when astronauts go into space, um, one problem that they have is that they're in a microgravity environment all the time. Uh, they're floating around in spacecrafts without any gravity. And this can have some negative effects on the body. You get uh, bone loss and muscle deterioration. And people have tried several different ways of mitigating this. What our project aims to do is to create artificial gravity for humans so that they are still in a 1G environment when they go up in space. This is a model of this proof of concept, um, you know, spacecraft. It operates on the fundamentals of uh, conservation of angular momentum. So what this is, is basically um, a two foot long truss. On one end are these flywheels um, operating on a motor, and on the other end is this astronaut habitat. So the way this spacecraft will hopefully work is um, <coughs> We have this motor at the end with the flywheels on it, and we spin that up in one direction. You can see the direction with the arrow on the top there. Um, so this thing spins in one direction, and if this thing starts out floating um, completely still, and you spin up these flywheels, um, that will cause the rest of the spacecraft to actually spin in the opposite direction. And hopefully what this does is it uh, induces an acceleration down here where the astronauts are living, and if you tune the, the speed that you spin this thing just right, you can actually create 1G of acceleration at this end for the astronauts to live in. So we wanted to see if this concept would actually work and whether the spin would be stable. And we kind of needed to do this in microgravity because we could test this on the ground by suspending it from a string through the center of gravity. However, the string, depending on how the, the motors worked how it spins, um, it could impart torques and forces that uh, would influence the spinning of this model and it wouldn't be exactly what we would expect. If you asked my teammates right away they would tell you that Hena was nervous. Like I was definitely a lot more nervous than the others in terms of flying it when it came to the thought of flying in microgravity. Everyone was excited, I was excited, but at the same time I was scared I was going to vomit, scared I would get sick, scared I would not be able to finish uh, controlling the laptop because my job in microgravity would be to control the commands from our laptop to our experiment. I think everyone has a moment in their childhood when they say, I want to be an astronaut. Uh, you know, it's one of the coolest careers out there and uh, not many people get to do it. This is just one step closer to kind of being an astronaut. So, I mean, who doesn't want to be able to fly in microgravity and just be in a completely different environment than what you're used to? It's completely exhilarating. Um, I, you, can, you can't really imagine what it's going to feel like until you started to lift up out of your seat and suddenly your eyes knew that you were right side up inside the plane but your brain suddenly couldn't tell which direction was up. What happened to me was my vision started to swim and I was looking at my mentor Tom and his face started to stretch and it was very, very strange um, 
thing that happened in my vision. You look around on that first parabola and everybody who was there for their first time, their eyes were really wide just trying to figure out what was going on in their brains because they couldn't see. Uh, so that was definitely the strangest, the strangest thing about that first parabola, being weightless for the first time. The reason why I got involved in this project was because Mira's friend had told Mira about it and Mira asked me if I would like to get involved. And just like that, we want to take our experiences to students through Boston and Cambridge and get them excited about the opportunities that are out there. A year ago, I would never have thought that I would get to fly on the microgravity plane testing an experiment with so many amazing students and mentors. And having this opportunity, we've realized that we have to make sure that students know that the impossible is actually possible.